Hello everyone, I'm Dan and just today Roblox announced support for notched phones at last. This has been a long time coming and I have some interesting thoughts about exactly the way they've done it because unlike many of their other updates they've actually divulged a lot of details about their design thinking and lots of their considerations. So just even before we get into these details I just want to say Thanks for actually providing the details. There are so many Roblox updates that just seem unsubstantiated and arbitrary out of nowhere, like they haven't considered anything at all. And the reality is that there have probably been considerations behind the scenes, but they're always just locked away from us. So thanks for letting the design documents spill a bit because it really does help to appease some of the concerns that people may have about this feature. So I have the announcement up here and you can see, hi developers, we want to share how Roblox will be rendered on notched mobile devices going forward and allow you to try this out as a studio beta feature. I'm not gonna read the entire thing, you can do that in your own time. Uh, but basically the crux of this is that uh, before, uh, Roblox would render in this sort of a rather primitive rectangle. They just cut off the notch because they don't want any user interface elements to hide behind the notch. Uh, but now they're actually going to use all of the display space and they're going to try and dynamically fit your content on the screen. Here you can see they're going into much more detail about lots of the various aspects of the systems and considerations that they've been using. But specifically what I want to talk about a bit today is this. Automatic background expansion. And other features like it which try and guess the developer's intent from just a list of properties. This picture here perfectly illustrates exactly what automatic background expansion is. If Roblox detects that you have a UI element that should be covering the whole screen but wouldn't due to this update, Roblox will automatically expand it to fill the true viewport dimensions so you don't see any background leaking through. Specifically, this system is looking for GUI elements with a size of 1010, that is 100% scale and no offset. Roblox have also reworked a bunch of their internal systems to support this automatic background extension too. For example, if you use tween service to tween a GUI's size to 1010, it will intercept that request and it will force it to resize to the screen's size rather than just the small viewport. Which raises a few questions in my mind about intuitiveness. So my problem with this system is that it sounds too much like magic. We are trying to infer developer intent and really we should just be asking the developer what they want. And in an ideal world, that's exactly what the engineers would probably have done. But the harsh reality of this update is that we can't just break all legacy content. There needs to be a compatibility strategy. And so this automatic background expansion is meant to be a compatibility feature so that these old games can mostly look all right. My personal problem with compatibility features though, is that I often see people in the Roblox community using compatibility features for new work. I mean, as a point of reference, do you remember compatibility lighting for Future is Bright and how people kept on building their lighting for compatibility, even though you're not meant to do that, it's meant to be a holdover from legacy days and... Oh, sorry, it's pent up. Anyway, because some community members don't listen, we end up with more novice community members thinking that these options are totally fine to use in new work, or even they're going to make them more productive. But the problem is that these features are magic, and magic features just work until they just don't. And when they don't work, you're going to be left in a debugging nightmare, and you're going to be wondering, how on earth is that happening? That's not what that should be doing because actually it's not doing that because it's magic and it decided it wants to do something else on your behalf. So now with that general background, I'd like to specifically criticize the notch update. So I think that is really good that Roblox are committing to backwards compatibility here. I don't think that is a good idea to break old games and Roblox are very clearly committed to not doing that. That's good. Thank you, Roblox. However, we have to acknowledge that there was a way to make this update a lot more consistent with the way that Roblox UI already works. And that would be to simply not try and retrofit old games to support new display shapes. That is to say, letterbox the games. But I did talk with a Roblox engineer about this and apparently they did not want to do that. They wanted old games to have the full display real estate available and they did not want to do any letterboxing. 
So, okay, I guess we're going to be doing automatic content adaptation. And honestly, I think if you give yourself that kind of weird restriction that you're not going to letterbox any content, this is the most reasonable solution on one condition. And that one condition is very, very important. It is so, so important that you do not let people use these features for new work. The reason why is simple. These features are magic. They are inconsistent with the way the rest of the engine works and they should not be used as a foundation for anything because they would be a weak, inconsistent foundation. They do not make logical sense. They do not line up with people's mental models of how anything works. They should not be used in new work. They should exclusively be in the domain of supporting legacy content for games that can't or won't be updated because the owners have been banned or left Roblox or simply aren't supporting the game anymore. That stuff still needs to be supported, but new work should be using the consistent logical system, not the magic one. And I say this as an API designer myself. I know how people use and abuse APIs. I've seen it many times. I will continue to see it throughout my entire lifetime. And I have seen that if you give people the option of using something really shitty but easy or something harder but correct and easier to scale, everyone's going to go for the really easy shitty one and then they're going to complain that nothing works anymore. And yes, you'll have the cohort of people who say, oh, there's actually a more correct way of doing it. And then the people are going to say, no, but I want the easy way. And I don't think that's their fault. I think that the behavior of people who use an API is a product of the design of the API, not a product of the users being stupid or whatever. Because your job as an API designer is to make the efficient, easy way the correct way of doing things, and to make the bad things hard to do, scary to do, or best yet, impossible to do, so that you avoid your users shooting themselves in the foot. So overall, I actually don't hate this update. I think that it could be really good, but I can't lie to you guys. I'm concerned, more than a little bit concerned, because this is dangerous territory. The moment you start playing with magic features, bad things happen. You lose consistency, you lose predictability, you lose logical behavior, and all of that stuff goes out the window in favor of stuff that just works until it does not just work. So really, the success of this update will come down to how Roblox execute on it. And I have to say, so far I am tacitly hopeful because they've been extremely diligent and detailed in their announcement post. It shows to me that they are quite dedicated to getting this right. The only question then is whether they do. So I'll be waiting eagerly to see what they do. Now, just as an aside at the end of the video, I did suggest to the engineers a completely alternate system which can be used to do UI edge extension in a little bit more of an intuitive and consistent way with the rest of the engine. It doesn't require any magic behavior, it's much more easy to understand, and it requires less scripting in order to achieve more UI layouts. However, the engineers ultimately decided that it was a little bit more advanced than what they were looking for, and it decided to go for a simpler system instead, which is what you are currently seeing. So if you're having any problems with this update, or if you find you're resorting to scripts too much to do basic stuff, then do go talk to the engineers because they are listening and they are taking feedback. And if they decide it's reasonable, they might introduce this other system to help out. But as is, they're not planning to implement it and that's totally fine. I basically just suggested it as a nice idea and I didn't expect it to go anywhere. So yeah. But anyway, that's about it from me for today. I just wanted to make a quick video about this update, acknowledging that it exists and talking about why I don't like the magic behavior aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I've been Dan and I'll look forward to seeing what you guys do with this update. Have fun.